Good morning or good afternoon. And again, welcome to the Skills Enhancement and Employee Development Series. My name is Jesse McIntyre and I will be your technical producer for today's event. We will be getting started in just a moment on performance appraisal overview and self-assessment training, but I did have a few housekeeping items I would like to go over with you before we begin. Please note that your microphones were muted by default whenever you logged into Teams, and they will remain muted during the duration of today's event. Any questions that you have during today's event, please feel free to type them in the chat. Live captioning is also enabled in Teams. All you have to do is locate the language and speech next to more, click on turn on live captions, select English and click confirm. If you need any assistance during today's event, please utilize the chat feature to contact myself, Jesse McIntyre, as I will be your technical producer and facilitator for today. And finally, please let us know what you think by using the survey link provided at the end of today's event. There will be a QR code that will pop up on your screen that will only work on a VFE device, but I will also drop the link in the chat for your utilization. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker and our host for today's event, Mr. Scotty Riggs. Sir, the floor is yours. All right, well, good afternoon all in the virtual world. I'm coming to you from the Training Academy in Baltimore uh, today. That's not the only where I work, but that's where I'm at doing some other training. So we're coming to you from the Academy in Baltimore. So it is afternoon here. I'm in the Eastern time zone, um, but welcome all. So I am, as this title slide says, I am part of a senior labor and employee relations specialist with the LNR division underneath HCS. And uh, we're gonna talk about a performance appraisal overview today and then uh, get into on the back half of the training session, we'll talk about self-assessment training, which is very relevant because we all know that according to OPM, our approved performance plan runs from October 1 through September 30th. And then after that period, we get into doing the final appraisal uh, at the end of the year. So it's very relevant that we would cover this and just give you an overview of the importance of the understanding your performance appraisal. Uh, also, it's always documented in 0750. We now have an electronic version, an electronic system that we annotate that through the 0750, and that's called ePerformance. I'm sure everyone has heard of that. Um, and just uh, to kind of set the expectations here, the chat box is open. Um, the mic is turned off, so you won't be able to come off mute. But there is a chat box. We will. I will try to monitor the chat box. But if it gets to be where six or seven questions come in at one time, I may not be able to stop the presentation and, and grasp what all those questions is at one time. But at the end of the presentation, before we end our time training time here together, we will make sure that those questions are addressed. And if our time slot doesn't allow for all the questions to be answered, uh, we can, uh, I can follow up with those questions uh, and get you an answer to your questions. So please utilize the chat box as we go through the PowerPoint presentation. All right, so as this says, here's our objective. So what are we here for? What are we, what's the goal of this training? What, what's the out, the in, the income? Is we're going to talk about the components of the F750 appraisal form because if we're going to do a good self assessment, then we need to understand that performance appraisal and how we're going to be rated and what elements and standards and where do they go and how do they flow and what some of the different aspects of the performance appraisal. We also under need to understand that a self assessment is very important in for your supervisor to understand your performance during that year. So we'll talk about the how how the self-assessment is and the importance of it. And then we'll talk uh, on the back end of this presentation just a little bit about the steps required to submit a self-assessment. So I, I list these objectives here because if you're like me and you get in a training session and they just start talking and don't tell you and don't provide a roadmap of where you're going, then for me, I'm always sitting through the whole presentation like, OK, well, when when are we hitting the last topic or when's the last topic? How do I know that we're getting close to the end of the session other than time? So we provide those objectives and we'll step through these each one. So it gives you a kind of a roadmap of where we're heading and where we're going with the presentation. And as we uh, transition to our, our next slide, we'll start this overview of the performance appraisal. 
So this shouldn't be a document unless you're very new to uh, VBA. This should be a very familiar looking document to it. But I just wanted to say that this first section is where you're going to kind of get that baseline information of like, hey, here's the period that I'm being rated for this. And here's my position title. You want to make sure all this administrative data is correct. It should be. But when you get issued your standards, whether it, it, you know any e performance, this is a time for you to review all the information because you want your 0750 to be accurate. You don't want to get to the end of it and you get a final rating issued and then discover, well, you know what? That's not even my right job title on here. Uh, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't catch it early. So that's why I just show this to you is that this is all the different data points that need to be filled in in Section A of the performance plan. Then we'll. Uh, the next two pieces on this next slide that we'll cover is um, one that happens and is for supervisors and then for you're like, well, you know, only a supervisor would communicate a change in the uh, performance plan. True, and I understand not everybody on this call may be in a supervisory role and have that option, but it's also a good thing for us to understand, even from an employee perspective, hey, what are those sections and what do they really mean and what do I need to be looking for? So let's say in a scenario for section C, you would have a plan change. And you're like, well, how can my performance plan change? It was issued to me in October. Now what do I do? How do I, how, why would it change? Well, let's say, that there is an additional element that's mandated for us to include uh, in our performance plan. So, you know, what if the leadership decides that, hey, I want all employees to now have this added to the performance plan? Well, the way that that would practically come to you as an employee would be through the 0750 through e performance, and you would see a notification that, hey, you've had a change to your performance plan, and we need you to go in and sign. The, and you'd be signing in section C and in there you should have what the new standard is and then what's the, the the element and then the performance standard. OK, so this is new what it's expected of me and both you, the, the, the supervisor will have to sign this and you, the employee will sign it. And this is all done through our e performance system. So. Um, and then that way you would have you would. It eliminates any confusion and you immediately know if there is a plan change, it is communicated to you and you understand. Now on the second on the bottom half of this slide is also another thing that happens, and this is a mandatory thing um, in our performance system, is that you would have a progress review. So um, a progress review, sometimes in layman's term, we may call that your mid-year review. Uh, typically, that is April 1st that we start talking about that. So we're on the, we all probably can reflect back and, like, oh, yeah, I remember I got that sent to me in an email and I had to sign that. So this is the progress review. And the key thing here is, that it is just that in the truest of sense of the words, it's to give you a snapshot of your progress, of where you are, kind of in that midpoint of your progress review. Now, from a supervisor standpoint, you're going to have two options. You're going to either mark the two options there, either they're considered fully successful or better, or you're going to need, uh, you're going to mark the other box that needs improvement to be fully successful or better. Now, I'll tell you if you mark that second box without getting too deep into the weeds, that there will be some other actions that need to follow you checking that second box. And I would tell you to reach out to an LER specialist if you're going to mark someone at the progress review needs improvements. You need to make sure um, that if you're doing that, you do start a conversation with your LER specialist and reach out and allow us to kind of walk through the next steps and make sure we're all doing it on, a, you know, in, an, in the appropriate manner. But for most of us, we'll get it and it'll just say is considered fully successful successful or better. So um, so it's just a good azimuth check right in the middle of the year. Um, this is also a, a good time for you as an employee to kind of if, if it is fully successful or better and you want to engage your supervisor and be like, OK, I understand I'm fully successful or better, but you can also engage them and be like, hey, I just want to make sure that I'm, I understand I'm fully successful. I'm not below the mark. But I want to make sure that um, what else can I do? What do you see? Is there improvement areas that although I'm fully successful, is there something else that you're seeing that I need to do? Or And it's just uh, an opportunity for you to have that open conversation with 
your rater and your supervisor to have that dialogue so we don't get to the end of it and get to a final rating and be like, well, man, I wished I would have known this beforehand. It's just that open dialogue that and gives you a, a and because it's manda uh, mandatory per our policy that you have to do a, man a progress review, it gives you an opportunity to have that dialogue and that discussion with your supervisor. And this there again, everything, all these used to be in the old system. It would be all through paper and we, you know, have to do the PDF and sign in and compile it back and send it back. Now we have e-performance that's totally um, electronic version of, of the 0750. So all this is done through task uh, that you'll get notified in your email when your progress review is ready and you can pull it up and look at it and then review it, then have that conversation with your uh, supervisor. Another, uh, the, as we transition, it's uh, second, another slide here is we're talking about now this is section F. So this is the one that we, most of the time we're like, okay, well, this is the one I really want to know. But like, how am I getting graded at the end of my year? And, and we have to, and you can see up at the top here is that there's different types of rating. We can do an annual rating of record, which is the most common. That means that, you know, we've had no plan, you know, everything has just stayed same, same during the whole performance year. And this is your final rating for this performance year. There are situations where you may have to do a special rating of record. Um, you know, I'll turn this class into a deep dive of what that is, but reach out to an LER specialist if you have um, questions or concerns or reach out to me personally and we'll discuss like, hey, what would be a special rating of record? If I can tell you in a bargaining unit in a situation you have to do, uh, if you're going to deny a wiki, that may be an opportunity uh, for you to do a special rating of record because you've got to document current performance before you deny the wiki. So that's just a one where you could do a special rating record. The other type is a summary rating. So the summary rating would come in play when you have a change in supervisor. So that supervisor that is outgoing would do uh, a summary rating saying, hey, while I rated this person, this is where they they set. And then um, the new incoming supervisor would then be able to consider that uh, that summary rating and depending on uh, they can adopt that summary rating as a final rating or they can if there's enough time in the, the rating period, then they can just take the time they re they rated you and make that your annual rating record. So that's just the three options. They are very high level brief overview of what those would be. It's very important that if you're going to get in one at the annual rating of record, it may seem redundant. Well, why am I putting what the dates of the uh, performance evaluation is. This is an annual rating record. It means it would go from October 1 to September 30th. Well, that blank and that information is built into the system just because if we get into a special rating record or summer rating, then we would need to um, annotate, hey, this is the period uh, that they are specifically being rated on. This one is just covering this time to this time. So that's why that is there. Then we all understand that OPM has approved and this is the five tier system that we have approved uh, to rate and that we go all the way from unacceptable to mini minimally satisfactory, fully successful, excellent and outstanding. So it's very uh, key that, uh, as I said, in the mid in the progress review, if you're going to go and, and rate anything that's going to be below that fully successful level, then you would need to reach out to your assigned LER specialist and uh, start having conversations of when you issue that, what are the implications of issuing a minimally satisfactory or unacceptable performance rating? So you'd want to have that, but this is just from an employee supervisor perspective. This is how the 0750 is, you would annotate in section F. And as we go to the next slide, you can see here, this is, uh, this is where uh, we did an overall rating there, but then in this section, we're talking about this is where you'll have those performance standards listed that are in your 0750 and then it'll have if you're exceptional fully successful or unacceptable in each one of those and each one of those categories based on what is checked in one of those three boxes you know exceptional fully successful unacceptable will drive and it feeds into and determines the overall rating that you get so um, and a supervisor has to you know indicate one of those level of achievement so you can have uh, you know and you would list each one and then you uh, if you wanted to go into a justification below and so let's say if you're rating every somebody and this is a star employee and you've got them exceptional down the board well you're going to need to provide a justification like hey what what was it 
that they did. And then you can see on this um, that there's a justification se section there, down there highlighted in the bottom of the, the slide. That that's where you would provide that. Hey, this employee just knocked it out. Uh, you know, and so I'm seeing a question come in about what are the standards that we will be rated on? The standards, it, the way that 0750 is, is you have elements and then you have standards. So we, if you look at your 0750, when you first get it issued and we'll, you know, we're coming up on a new performance year, so you'll get new performance, uh, a new performance plan issued and that's your time to look at it. It will be listed and you'll see it in your 0750. There will be an element listed and then underneath that will be standards. And then underneath that standards will be your um, all of our standards are written at the fully successful level. So we don't write them at the exceptional level. We write them at the fully successful level. And it will be very clear in your 0750. Here is what you have to do to be rated in this element and with these standards to get the fully successful level. Now, I have seen some that I go further than that and go ahead and di uh, differentiate between fully successful and exceptional level. And so you may get that information. But what is required is for us to uh, notify each employee what it is that I have to do to, to at least get fully successful, because that's how we write our performance standards is at the fully successful level. So hopefully that answered your question. If, if um, and then I got another question, are standards the same as sub elements? You may have an element and then underneath that you would have a sub element and it could be that is um, a, a standard. So yes, they can be the same, but you'll have clear elements, but there are sometimes um, an element so broad that they start breaking it down into sub elements to kind of narrow down the focus, but all of it will be listed in your 0750. And so that's just, you know, a, a, an educational thing for us all to understand that this 0750 is more than just, you know, signing it when it comes through and not really paying attention. I can tell you in e-performance and then like top right corner when you go through it, you can say view as a PDF and that way it, um, you know, it, it'll display it all at once in a PDF version and so you can review it easier. Uh, I find that easily uh, easier personally to review uh, review my own performance appraisal is when I view it as a PDF so I can go through it and look at it. And we'll talk out, we'll talk in a little bit um, just about how you practically do that self-assessment it'll probably be very key for you to have that pdf version at that point so um hopefully those answered those couple of questions i saw come in if not uh send uh, you know let me know i need more clarification on that but we're going to do our first uh, poll question next so this is just a uh, answer that you'll need to hit and then you'll just once you submit your answer you can hit close and it'll get out it'll move away from your screen but here's the uh Here's the question. So what section of the VA 0750 documents a progress review? All right, so I'm seeing some poll questions up and you can select here so you don't have to put it in the chat. So there's an actual poll question built in. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre for that. All right, so we're getting uh, some responses here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. If we can end the poll, it's, uh, we got 75 responses in here. So we have a diversity of opinions here. So we have section A is leading the pack. Section B is um, in last place. And then section C is in a third place. So we got 55% that I uh, think it's uh, A, and then 32% thinks it's C, and then a 13% thinks it's um, uh, B. So now the key thing is this is the progress review. So this is that mid-year review that you may hear more commonly rather than a per. Um, and so the correct answer here um, is C. Section D covers the progress review. So that's the part of the 0750 you need to narrow in, and that's what will be given to you uh, once it, you know, once a performance year, you will get a your 0750 and section D will be uh, filled out. So if it's it's not, then that's problematic because our policy says you are entitled to and you get a progress review. So um, A is yes, the performance data, that's your admin data, just kind of laying out who you are, what position you are in and uh, and the, the admin data of it. So, uh, so 
now we're going to transition um, to the next slide and just kind of a visual thing here. So as we transition to employee self-assessment, right? So you're like, well, what, what does this graphic and this picture have to do with anything with about a, a self-assessment? Well, just as that water is reflective of everything around it, so is your self-assessment a reflect of your performance. So when you write your self-assessment, I will tell you that don't be afraid to sell what you did, but make sure it's an accurate picture of what you actually accomplished. Um, this is not a time to go and, you know, cut and paste and find some guru out there that's got something on Google and just use a bunch of fancy words that when it comes down to it, wouldn't really reflect what you actually did. Not saying anybody would do that, but this is just a time. Just as this picture is a true depiction of the reflection is a true picture uh you know reflection of the picture it, it's around it that's what your self-assessment needs to be is it needs to be a direct reflection of your actual performance based on what we just covered that 0750 that's aligned out every one of your elements and standards and what the fully successful level is and what you've accomplished during this year so now we'll transition to the next slide and we'll talk about OK, you mentioned the term self-assessment. What is that and, and and why is it important to me? And as the first bullet says, it, it's it's in your description. Whether you're a supervisor, you still have you can still submit. So this is not just a, an employee thing. You know, everybody has a boss, right? Even up to the secretary himself. But in our world, everybody has somebody they report to. Right. So it, it's your description of what you have accomplished related to the performance elements and measures in your performance plan. And when I say performance plan, it's just what we covered, that 0750 that we just went in and did a great over, uh, overview of. It's the self-assessment is so critical. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, whether it's in a training environment or just in conversations with different employees, that, well, you know, I can't believe I only got a fully successful I mean, I just I, I knocked it out of the park this year. And I'll tell you my first question when I get in those conversations, I said, well, did you do a self-assessment? Well, no, my supervisor knows what I did. Well, they may in the moment, but you also have to understand that a supervisor is only human as well. And they have a capacity on how much they can remember you know, as time goes on, some have, you know, greater capacity to retain information than others, but that's why this self-assessment process is set up. It gives you a fair opportunity as employee to communicate, hey, just as a reminder, here is all the stuff I accomplished. Here's what, here's how it's tied into this element and this standard, and this is what I did to accomplish it, and this is how I performed in this year. Um, and it's also a time, you know, where if you submit that self-assessment and you're working on it, I um, mean, we'll talk about it in a minute, is we work on that throughout the year. It, you know, your self-assessment shouldn't be like, OK, well, it's now September 30th, the performance year's ended. Let me go work on a self-assessment. That is a way. So I'm not going to tell you, you it's an absolute no on that, but I'll tell you that's probably not the most accessible way to do a self-assessment, and we'll get into that. So we transition to the next slide. So uh, we'll just use a little uh, levity here to describe this. So as you can see from this, uh, we transition this next slide on the the about the comic is uh, go ahead and build the slide out. Is so here we got a you know a comical situation where he's issuing your here's your annual performance review. He said I I only focused on the last two weeks, and of course the employee's like well. That's not good for me. I was on vacation the last two weeks. And then, you know, the supervisor is obviously he's, well, I don't have time. I got to go spread some more motivation over here. So this is what I'm saying that that self-assessment is so key is because it gives you the opportunity for you to submit to your supervisor a progressive timeline of your accomplishments from October 1 through September 30th. You know, if there's a summary rating or something else there, then we'll, you know, those those are one offs that we can deal with. You know, you would only limit it to the time that you're being rated. But for most part, the self assessment is going to cover that October 1 through September 30th. And that's, you know, a long time for one person to remember 
all your accomplishments. So it's your opportunity. To go to the next slide. The question is why? We get the question a lot. Why should I? I mean, it takes some time. It takes some effort. Why would I even bother with this? Well, here's just some suggestions why you would bother with it is it can influence your performance rate. Like if your supervisor, not that they're um, intentionally leaving out something, but they just don't remember. Like they remember signing it to you way back when, but they just, it just not on their radar when they're going to, to fill out that 0750. And so it can increase your performance rating. Like, oh man, I I'm so glad they said that. I forgot that they did that, man. Yeah, they knocked that out of the park. I'm like, I want to make sure I, I get that in and consider that in their rating. It, um, it conveys what you have accomplished through that rating year. There again, be true to yourself. Know what you performed, what you did during that rating period, and make sure that it's an accurate reflection of what you've done. Um, show your, you know, we all have sometimes um, an organization. We all are underneath this big VA agency, VBA specifically for us. We have a a big mission, and so we want to show our impact on the organization that we're assigned to. You know, and then we can tell them, you know, if there's different accomplishments that are in our standards and elements. We want to make sure we communicate how we accomplish those and that in in your overall rating, you know, if there's um, things that come with a certain levels of ratings, then that accomplishment can be recognized. Whereas if you just assume that your supervisor knows everything you did and if they were really a good supervisor, they wouldn't have to have a self-assessment. I, I'm not going to tell you you can't have that opinion, but I'll tell you that's probably not the best or leading practice to have and mindset going into it. You are your own best advocate and use the self-assessment to advocate for the performance that you did that year. Transition to the next slide here we see, so we know the why and now how, and so we avoid you know, uh, this. And so these are some hyperlinks in here. So you're like, well, I, I, I really like this idea and this concept of self-assessment, but how? And um, so we can build that out. And so in the middle of the slide, it's going to have some different hyperlinks that, that will take you to, hey, if you don't know where to get started, OK, well, guess what? Today's your the best day for you because we got some templates and some stuff. We even got an accomplishment log for you. We've got uh, self-assessment, how you document your accomplishments and the way that you would do it. And so um, and. Uh, Thanks, Jesse. He's putting these things in the, the chat. So we have all these. And when you document your accomplishments, that star method, you know, that's not a new uh, thought, a new, you know, groundbreaking method, but it works. You know, OK, here's the situation. Here was the task I, that I was assigned. Here's the action that happened. And as the result of my actions, you know, here's the results of my actions. And so that's kind of what you want to keep. It doesn't have to be formatted situation task asked results, but when you go through writing out that self-assessment, that's a good way to make sure you stay on point and you're not just given a 30 page dissertation on your performance that year is that you're really very focused, very summarized to it. We go to the, the next slide, just some points here um, about writing yours. Um, and I'll wait for the slide to build just momentarily here, but we want to make sure that um, you review your performance standards and accomplishments. So we want to make sure and we understand and make sure that you're doing a. Professional memo, so and that template will give you this this the shell for that, because here again. You're communicating. To your supervisor what you accomplished. How you communicate that and how you convey your thoughts is also a testament of your overall performance. So you want to be professional in this. You want to make sure that it's it looks good. Um, do a you know a spell check, grammar check, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But write about each performance element. So practically what I do every year is I take the I told you earlier the PDF version, then I cut and paste into a word um, I cut and paste into a word document each performance element and standards and then what's required to be fully successful and then as I accomplish something and when I get to the totality of the end of my self-assessment I'm going to justify not only did I hit that fully successful but here's how I exceeded that a b c d e whatever 
and I'm going to make that clear. So it's a clear indication to the supervisor. OK, here was the element, the standard. Here's what was expected. Here's how I went above what was expected and accomplished more. And this is what the results that I got. There again, we, brevity is key here because your supervisor is probably rating more than you. Uh, most supervisors have more than one person they're rating. So there again, we don't want to get into a research paper and submit a 15, 20 page research paper on your performance because we have to also understand the supervisor is busy and we want to make sure we're brief. So I recommend, although it's not in policy, but I would say a rule of thumb is no more than two to three pages um, is a good self assessment how you break down your your performance. When we uh, transition to the next slide, we're going to talk about just the, the reviewing for the completeness. So that's it there again. I talked to you about it's a professional memo. Um, yeah, and so somebody said, well, you know, if you need to be long winded, you can change your font size. Uh, just make sure you're not going down so low on your font size that it makes it difficult for your supervisor to read. So, um, you know, Size eight would probably be not there, so they said that was a joke. So I got it, but uh, you can, you know, make sure it's professional. But you want to uh, correct your grammar and spelling uh, impacts and benefits tied to the organization that you're working at. You know, if you're on a a team that produced a certain thing, um, not only identify what overall happened as far as the organization. We were, you know, number one out of whatever. Or put some quanta quantitative data in there for your supervisor that it distinguishes what you did um, and don't talk in just generalities. Be specific of what you did and how that accomplished the performance standard and element. And then lastly, that point about back up all statements with facts or supporting examples. We'll go to the next slide and just give you some self-assessment tips and um, we'll briefly wait for this whole slide to build out here. Uh, we'll have different suggestions for you. Um, I talked about the formatting your assessment to mirror the performance elements and standards. And for me, I just found it easier if I just did a Word document and cut and paste them directly over into that Word document so that even if I got like, well, I'm not, well, what element was this? I, I know I did this, but which one does it closely align with? I could just go up there and immediately read, oh, OK, they, it fits best here. Or, you know, and if it's one that overlaps both, then it's OK to be repetitive and put that accomplishment that covered two elements if it did. That's fine, but you just want to make sure that it's logically flowing and that what you put underneath that element, if your supervisor reads it and be like, well, it's great you did that, but it has no, it, it's not even tied to this performance standard, so I don't know what to do with it. So um, use a direct style there. You know, uh, um, you want to be very direct to the point, understanding um, that your supervisor um, it's going to not be able to read, you know, 15 pages from, you know, 20 different employees on a self-assessment. Um, you want to be highlight the specific uh, achievements. And then, like I said, been, been saying, make that connection like, hey, here is the element and standard and here is how the action that I am telling you about connects back to this. Get specific examples. Don't, you know, as I said earlier, don't just generally say, well, you know, I, I was part of a great team this year. Supervisors probably going to be like, well, that's that's good. I just don't know what to do with that because it doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't tell me specifics of any specific accomplishment you made. So um, and then one thing that's um, also a good point to do on self-assessment is note those challenges that were overcome. Like if you faced a challenging situation, um, then just make a point to go through and notate that challenge like hey if this was a, a struggle or you you had to take extra you know i took an extra course because i was you know i struggled with um my writing or something like that and it was a huge challenge for me i can you know but i went on my own and took some extra courses to improve my writing well hey a supervisor may want to know that it shows a lot of initiative shows that you're trying to better yourself professional development so that's an easy thing to annotate under professional development We'll slide, go to, to um, the next slide here, and we'll talk about uh, another comic here. And so this one just goes that, you know, I have to give you your performance rating, a poor performance because you did no work. And of course, the employee's like, what? No work? What do you mean? I, I wrote 
all these technical documents. I sent them to you all week. I emailed them to you with the instructions to forward, you know, and then it gets to the end and he's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. I don't know how to open an attachment. Um, and so it end, doesn't end well for them. So there again, communicate in a way and make sure that you're you're tying everything to the performance and standards because that's the story. That's what the self-assessment is doing, is going to be your performance story. Nobody can tell your performance story like you. I may be able to objectively look at what you accomplished and say, okay, I think that this is what they did, but we are our own best storytellers, and no one will tell your performance story better than you. And the way we do that in our system is through a self-assessment. So uh, the next slide here, we'll just talk about that there's a deadline. So, you know, it's it's something that this is why I said it's it's going to be really difficult and challenging for you to write a self-assessment if you haven't started it and you're at the end of the year. It's not impossible. You just have to understand that it has to be communicated within 10 working days, 10 working days after the end of the cycle. So ours, because our system approved by OPM ends on September 30th, that would equate to October 16th. Your supervisor needs to be in receipt of your self-assessment so that they, him or her, can meet their deadline to issue you that final rating. So they won't issue that final rating prior to that 10 day because they have to give you that opportunity to submit that self-assessment. So just some timelines and something for you to consider there on the time frame. So we go to the next uh, slide. We'll talk about the. And when we're talking about that final narrative, you know, if there again, we're just um, it's a hyperlink to a, a quick reference on employees providing your fi a final narrative and e-performance. And we, we've been talking about it's just providing information to the rating official that can be used to supplement their knowledge of what you accomplish. And here again is that second, the, the block on the right says it's specific examples. We need to, the more specific you can get about what you accomplished, you know, if you went and did a um, on-site training session or a virtual training session and all the feedback was like, man, this is great. It was great training. Well, make sure you're communicating that. That's pretty specific. You can have data that shows, hey, I got all fives on the survey results during this training session. That's something that sets you apart and, and shows how that, you know, you performed at a high level. That's specific. So that's what you would want to do. We'll do uh, one final poll question here on slide 18 and take just a minute and that poll question will come up. You don't have to answer in the chat so here we go is uh, self-assessment is mandatory is that true or false i'm seeing the majority uh overwhelming majority uh of about 94 percent are saying that that is a false uh statement so we'll end this poll and then we'll go over um and so the question is and, and words have meaning here is self-assessment is mandatory that would be false. It's not mandated. It is an opportunity for you, but nothing in policy mandates you want. And as we go to the, the next slide here showing is this is I'm just going to give you a quick overview. This is not going to be a deep dive on an e-performance training session by any means, but I felt it is an injustice to you if I didn't at least tell you how to step through this in e-performance since that is our official system we use. So you would go through these steps and I'm not going to read them to you, but you, this is how you would do it and is go through. This is how you select and enter in that self-assessment. There again, e-performance has a character maximum. Uh, and if you're aware of how that character uh, characters work, spaces count as characters. So just understand you were very limited on space on that. And then as, as number six says, always save our work. So we make sure we don't get all that typed in and then forget to hit save and go next and go back and it's all blank. And we have to go back and do it again. And as we do, the next slide will continue this uh, process of how you do it um, and you go through it. Um, what I'll highlight on this slide is the fact that the note, if you're copying and pasting from like your Word document that you've been annotating your performance 
uh, criteria and what you've accomplished every time throughout the year and you're cutting and pasting that into e-performance, no problem with that. I, I would do the same thing instead of having to hand type it again. Just a note, don't just uh, make sure that you're strip, stripping all that formatting away on the and hit the strip all the formatting icon when you paste it into it, because if not, then it may throw and make it look unprofessional the way that uh, the formatting is is done if you don't strip away that formatting that is Word because it won't automatically format it that way in the e-performance. So you want to make sure that you hit that to make it look right and it displays in a professional manner for you. Um, for the supervisors on the call that actually do the rating, there's a note at the bottom of the slide that's really important for you to understand how do you get to see this in narrative that we just went through on how the employee communicates the narrative. It's not going to display on a PDF by default. If you want to, uh, any of all the employees' comments or narratives to display, then when you go in, you have to concur with the employee's text during the rater prepare a final review task. So that's a tasker that will be sent to you as a supervisor, and you have to select that you want to see those narratives to make it display. If for some reason you're not seeing it and your employee has told you that you've submitted a self-assessment, reach out to our LER shop. We have um, an e-performance uh, person that can go in and help you with that and see if we can get that self-assessment uh, to where you can see it and read it. But just wanted to make sure and note that it wasn't automatically going to be. Um, somebody's asking the question I see in the chat box, can we like the performance year hasn't ended. Can we go ahead and start working on ours for next year? Absolutely. Like if you know, if you already don't have a what I would call a uh, a working document or a living document is another term people use, then yeah, you could go ahead and use one of these templates we've covered in this training session and go ahead and build it out. Um, and then um, and we can go ahead and transition to the next slide. But yeah, I would absolutely say go ahead and start building it now. I mean, because we know when September 30th come that that clock, that 10 day clock starts ticking. So that's going to put you under um, a window that you got to comply with because your uh, supervisor is not obligated to accept it if it's outside that 10 day window. The next slide here is just going to be uh, for you and your education there again. Um, I'm not going into a deep e performance training session, but um, the what we're what we're seeing here is this e performance. These are all hyperlinks on this slide, and I believe I called a question earlier about the slides. And it's my understanding that the recording and the slides will be posted, and you'll get information of where that is, that is. But you can get a copy of these slides, and each one of these slides, if you hover over these links, will take you into different training tools in the e performance. Um, system so you can uh, you know how to videos quick reference cards all those things are hyperlinked in here for you just to give you an opportunity and to understand how to do some of these things so uh, i have a another question here in the chat that as we transition to the resource slide that we're coming to the end of ours and it says is placing yourself for self submit self-assessment verbiage required to be input in e-performance or can the word doc simply be attached in e-performance i would tell you that the system is going to automatically notify you to that hey your rating is ready for you to input your self-assessment i will tell you it's probably best to put it in e-performance now if you choose to just simply attach it then I can't guarantee that the flow of information, what if that attachment doesn't flow right? And then all of a sudden you think you've got a great self-assessment that's sent to your supervisor and it wasn't inputted in the correct spot. He never, he or she never saw it. And then all of a sudden they don't, they're just rating you based on, well, I just got to go from memory and I'm not sure how, and you, you, you know, did a great self-assessment. So that's what I would recommend um, as far as that goes. For the references, obviously, if we're talking about anything related to performance, we know from the law standpoint, 5 U.S.C. Chapter 43 governs that. Um, VA Directive Handbook 5013 is our performance handbook. And then we all understand that um, we operate in a uh, in collaboration with our union partners, and that is all stipulated on how we do things, how we do self-assessment, 
and all that is outlined in an AFG master agreement. Specifically in that agreement is Article 27 that we'll talk about that performance appraisal process. And then the last link is our uh, VBA, the LER division. It's our SharePoint site where we have a lot of resources, a lot of templates uh, related to this. We tried to share those with you as we um, um, as I've went here. But we'll transition to the last slide, which is just our question slide. And I will open it up and see if there is any final questions. And if I've missed some in the chat, then uh, we'll answer those now. Or if you have some questions that's come to mind that uh, you want to talk about now, we'll answer those questions. And if I don't get any more questions, I'll turn it back over to our moderator. Ready? I am. I'm not seeing any additional questions. Um, unless I've missed something, so I'll turn it back over to our moderator. Thank you for your time. Hopefully the session has been informative and has helped you and give you some tips on your performance and given you the tools and the resources to be able to tell your performance story. Thank you for your time and attention today. All right, thank you so very much, Mr. Riggs. We greatly appreciate your time this afternoon in providing this presentation to us. As I stated before we begin, here is the uh, evaluation for the end of the day. Um, also, please keep in mind that this will not work with a GFE device uh, or without a GFE device, excuse me, but I will be posting the link in the chat. So here is the link for our survey. Please take a moment to take a look at that and respond. Uh, we greatly appreciate the feedback and we continue to grow and develop and change our programs based upon that feedback. So with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and enjoy the rest of this week. And as always, we will see you in the next SEEDS event. Thank you, everybody.